Good evening, everyone. My name is Riley Peterson. Today, I'll be delving into the life of Genesis James E. Bowman, renowned for his contributions regarding inherited blood disorders and bioethics. James E. Bowman was born on February 5, 1923, in Washington, D.C., being the eldest of five children of Dorothy Bowman, a homemaker, and James Edward Bowman, Sr., a dentist. Bowman graduated from Dunbar High School in 1939 and continued his education at Howard University and Howard Medical School in biology, obtaining his MD in 1946. Following his collegiate education, Bowman pursued his residency in pathology at St. Luke's Hospital from 1947 to 1950. Here, he served as the first African-American resident at St. Luke's. Following his residency, Bowman served as chair of pathology at Provident Hospital before he was drafted during the war and spent 1953 to 1955 as chief of pathology at Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in Aurora, Colorado. Bowman married Barbara Taylor Bowman, pictured centered right, whom he had his one and only child with Valerie Bowman Jarrett, pictured left. His granddaughter, Laura Jarrett, is pictured on the right. Bowman worked alongside geneticist and hematologist Henry Frischer. Bowman and Frischer co-published several articles together, including research regarding the genetics of starch gel electrophoretic variants of human 6-phosphogluconic dehydrogenase. Bowman's first expedition took place in Iran, where he led expeditions to collect blood samples from Iran's ethnic groups. Blood samples were collected to assess and understand varying susceptibility to favism a form of anemia resulting from the deficiency of glucose 6-dehydrogenase. Through his capillary blood samples and diet observation, Bowman was able to determine a contributing factor pertaining to favism, the fava bean. For those with G6PD deficiency, the consumption of these beans triggers a dangerous anemic reaction. As pictured, fava beans contain high concentrations of visine and convisine, the consumption of which can increase levels of reactive oxygen species causing a type of anemia referred to as hemolytic anemia. Bowman came across an extremely ill patient diagnosed with favism, who unexpectedly recovered after a blood transfusion. Her recovery enabled Bowman to link the blood disorder with a potential means of recovery, blood transfusions. Following his work in Iran, Bowman studied populations in Africa, exhorting the conflation of sickle cell anemia with the more common sickle cell trait. Sickle cell is a hereditary form of anemia involving a mutated form of hemoglobin, which distorts the red blood cells into a crescent shape at low oxygen levels. Bowman gained national attention when he declared the passage of adult mandatory sickle cell screening laws were more harmful than beneficial, as testing was enforced specifically to marginalized communities, and therefore assumed the disease was specific to these communities. Bowman further evaluated laboratory diagnostic techniques to detect and distinguish sickle cell anemia involving flow cytometry. Cytometry analyzes single cells as they flow past multiple lasers while suspended in a buffered salt-based solution. By utilizing flow cytometry and collected capillary blood samples, Bowman recognized HBS and other abnormal hemoglobin migrated differently from the normal HB due to the difference in charges allowing the disease and or sickle cell trait to be detected. By distinguishing sickle cell anemia from the sickle cell trait, Bowman determined the inheritance pattern. As you can see in the chart, there is a 50% chance with each pregnancy of having a child with sickle cell trait if both parents carry the trait, and a 25% chance for both normal hemoglobin and sickle cell disease. Now, Bowman's legacy continued on after his passing in 2011. Bowman's discovery from a sickly patient's recovery enabled the use of blood transfusions as a means of recovery for patients suffering from this glucose deficiency, or as you hopefully now know, is favism. Displayed is an example of a sickle cell screening test. Bowman's discoveries halted unethical sickle cell screenings, and treatment opportunities eventually became available via blood transfusion and stem cell transplants in light of his research. Bowman's work in distinguishing sickle cell anemia from sickle cell disease has aided modern scientists in understanding the inheritance pattern of this disorder, and flow cytometry was utilized more extensively in future research. However, Bowman is perhaps most well known for his contribution to ethical medical practices. He confronted the ethical aspects of genetics before bioethics was considered its own discipline, 
and is therefore coined one of the founders of bioethics, or the notions of right and wrong. Bowman's work undoubtedly aided generations worth of individuals suffering from these inherited blood disorders, and his contribution to bioethics altered the way in which we assess medicinal practices to this day. So I think we owe a huge thanks to James E. Bowman and his contribution to the field of genetics, and thank you to all who listened. Even if that is just you, Professor Oaks, have a wonderful day.